What's up guys, GrimXV here. In today's video, we'll be diving into DevBlock 25 and discussing my thoughts on the upcoming changes. SLS released the blog this past Thursday and titled it Spellcraft Unbound. The post starts off by showcasing awesome concept art, which I hope is going to be a new in-game boss or V-Blood we see in 1.0. Here's what they said in their opening paragraph. With great enthusiasm, we bring you yet another developer update from the Crypts of Stunlock Studios. Today, we'll be delving into the changes with the progression from how spells are acquired to recipes and the quality of unlife that smooths the whole experience into a delightful, intuitive process. We aim to put a new twist on how you play, delivering much desired changes in unexpected packages. The next section of the blog covers the exciting new spell changes. SLS takes time to first note that while the current progression leads to some build variety in the form of bossing order, it still gatekeeps you with the need to hunt a specific boss for certain spells such as Lydia for Chaos Volley or Quincy to get your first ultimate in the form of Merciless Charge. Here's what they had to say about the upcoming changes. Let's shake it up and add some deadly spice to your life. A little deviation for you deviants who enjoy multiple playthroughs. Flexibility for everyone, including those enjoying their first dive through the challenges of embracing their vampire nature. Introducing spell points. When you slay certain V-bloods and drain them of their power, in addition to any recipes imparted through their blood knowledge, they give you a fraction of magical energy. These spell points come in various flavors, divided by spell school, and then further divided into three tiers. For instance, slaying Clive the Firestar now awards the recipe for the alchemy table, minor explosive boxes, and one tier one chaos spell point. They go on to say, the spell book, which has been redesigned with these changes, has the spells divided between three tiers. Each tier represents a level of complexity rather than strength. Vampires will be introduced to more complex spells after they've gotten their feet wet. Unlocking the second tier spells fairly early in their journey into Dunley Farmlands with Vincent the Frostbringer and Craig the Undead General. In closing for this section, they point out that in the current game, as you head to Act 2, you only have access to Merciless Charge for an ultimate, but with the new changes, you'll now have access to two out of four potential ults. They also give us a sneak peek at one of these. Now, if you've been following the blogs for over the past year or so, you'll know they've been hinting at wanting to separate spells from V-Bloods for a while now. There's also been speculation over how this would work in regards to research progression, but from the sound of this post, I think we can now assume that research and potentially even their associated V-Bloods won't be changing much. As for the introduction of the spell point system itself, I personally think this is great. I've recently been playing the arena's open world server and from playing the fresh wipe, I can already think of several ways having this implemented would have been useful or made things more exciting. I mean, imagine following a wipe day Zerg into a V blood fight and being able to pick up an early corrupted skull or bone explosion. I'm pretty sure the speed runners are going to have a lot of fun with this. Yo, sick boys, <laughs> Looking at the screenshots provided in this section, we can see some pretty noticeable changes to the spell book. Right away, you can see the distinction of spell tiers with Void, Veil of Chaos, and Chaos Barrier currently being classified as Tier 3, while Aftershock and Merciless Charge are being showcased as Tier 1. We now also have what seems to be a dual storage system for each spell on the right hand side. We'll come back to this photo to discuss what these are in our next section, but for now let's move on to the new Ultimate Preview. We don't know much in the way of stats, but looking at the image, I think it's safe to say that this is part of the unholy tree. This strikes me as a sort of raise the undead or army of the undead type of spell. I personally think this is going to be rather weak in the early game, but it could potentially have some rather strong combos or synergies in the mid to late game. For example, in the current unholy tree, spells like bone explosion or ward of the damned have jewel modifiers that extend your skeleton's life and provide shields to them, while corrupted skull and soul burn both have powerful consume effects that cause direct damage or amplify your damage dealt respectively. It'll take some testing for sure, but I think there are some exciting possibilities there. The next section of the blog is the biggest announcement in my opinion and covers the addition of spell passives and a new crafting station called the Altar of Stygian Awakening. Here's what they said. Each spell school has a tier of passive effects that can be unlocked to provide bonuses that modify your gameplay. Some are as simple as situational boost and effectiveness. Others provide unique opportunities like spawning blood orbs that you can pick up to recover health or summoning a skeletal warrior after you feed. Being tied to your altar, these effects can be unlocked by gathering materials from the new in-game zone events and pulling together with your clanmates to unlock them one at a time in whatever order you like. This means you'll all share a sort of clan-wide progression, encouraging you to work together towards a common goal that empowers you all and prepares you for the oncoming 
challenges of facing the greatest threats to your rise. Looking at the screenshots, we can see the new crafting station, which seems like it'll be a new corner piece addition to our forge room. Circling back to the spellbook screenshot from earlier, we can actually see one of three possibilities in the chaos tree that seems to provide a creeping DOT and explosion effect to your ignites. Based on this and the following screenshot, it looks like we'll have a total of 18 passives split three each between the different spell schools. My hope in regard to the clan progression element of this is that it's strictly progression towards unlocking them and that's it. Meaning that once you have all of them, player A can select the ones that they want while player B can select an entirely different set if they so choose to. The scary part of this for me though is the potential implications this could have on PvP. Seeing a passive like this one and the fact that this is also seemingly a T1 kind of makes my eyes bulge a bit, especially when you consider how much healing you already get out of some of the blood spells. But I'm sure SOS is planning on testing all of this in the beta, so we'll just simply have to wait and see what changes are made. In the last sections of the blog, SOS showcases a new base moving feature they're working on. Right away in the opening paragraph, they state that they aren't sure if it'll make the cut for 1.0, but that they wanted to get it out to us to hear our opinions on it. Here's how they described it. The process is fairly simple. Place a new structure we've made that will act as the castle heart in your relocated castle and in unreserved territory. Then interact with it. You can now connect that heart to a real castle heart that you have ownership of. When you do so, you get access to a new version of the build menu. Within this build menu, you have access to every individual piece placed in the connected castle and can piece together an entirely new stronghold using the parts you already own. When you confirm it, your old castle disappears and your new one solidifies and forms. Any pieces that went unused are reduced to their base materials for you to reuse as you like. Just make sure you remember to make space for your prisoners and servants. There are some structures you must place to complete the move so you won't be able to leave the behind. So pretty cool stuff. I know a lot of players, myself included, have been wanting a feature like this, especially since we currently lose our servants if we move castles. So definitely great to see they're working on this. Taking a closer look at the screenshots provided in this section, we can also see what looks to be a new storage decoration and a small announcement that wallpapers will finally no longer cost resources. In closing, SLS states that there are even more big announcements right around the corner and that things are going to get interesting. These past two posts alone have brought my hype to new levels, so I can't really imagine what else they have to show us. And all right, that's it, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. This is GrimXV signing off.